Hey, Okim students, Ben Asman here. Today we're gonna to be working on the steam distillation of eugenol from Clove. Let's get to it. Isolation of eugenol from Clove by steam distillation. Okay, let's start off with a quick review. Why does something boil? Why does it evaporate? In general, this happens because the vapor pressure of that compound has matched the vapor pressure or exceeded the vapor pressure of its surrounding environment. Our surrounding environment near sea level on Earth is about one atmosphere or 760 torr. Now, for eugenol, that's 254 degrees. That's when it reaches 760 torr. For water, that's 100 degrees C. That's when it reaches 760 torr. That's when it boils. But here's the thing. Then what matters is the total pressure of a of a whole solution, which means that the combination of the two will actually boil less than either of them separately. Because right here, you get the vapor pressure uh, at the kind of mid to late 90s um, uh, temperature for the water. And that of eugenol, that means that if you get, let's you get some that little bit from the eugenol, a lot from the water, that adds up to 760 and it boils earlier. Benefit of doing this is that 250 degrees, even things that are more, uh, organic compounds tend to start decomposing at those times. Not great, plus in general, uh, it's a little dangerous getting to those temperatures. Our thermometers can't get to those temperatures safely. They can for a little bit, but uh, we don't want to go any higher. So it's a, kind of that risky area. Um, so if we can keep it lower, we do want to keep it lower. So this allows us to get the eugenol over without having to go to those kind of temperatures. Well, we don't risk decomposure. And then at the end, because water and eugenol are not miscible, they don't dissolve in each other, you just end up with two phases, an aqueous phase and an organic phase. You can easily then separate that, and then you've got your pure eugenol or whatever compound you were looking for during your steam distillation. Now at this point you should be used to doing these, but just in case you aren't, this is the distillation apparatus. I'm going to start by building that. We have here our, uh, our water-cooled reflux tube. Remember, they are independent tubes, so the water comes in through the bottom, out through the top, and it can never get to that center tube, so you don't have to worry about that. And we have our three-neck uh, distillation, and we have a glass thermometer adapter, and then all the o-rings and caps that we need so in general remember with all of these uh, that the way that they connect uh, if you have I don't know, one of these you want to get your cap with a hole on first then your o-ring and then you can connect these two together and I'm going to connect it with these facing up that way I can get the most amount of water in there while it's going nice and tight and just as before uh, this bottom one we're not going to need it because our round bottom uh, can't actually have that so we're just going to have a K clap right there but it's not required if you clamp the bottommost piece uh, so we don't need one right there but we will need for up here so get this one on and as always we want to get that um, that o-ring past this uh, glass lip right here and we can connect that there and we're gonna take our little o-ring and we're gonna slip it here we're gonna guess how deep we need to go I'm gonna guess uh, only about this deep let's see how that lines up that's actually not quite deep enough so we'll go up just push that down a bit and that looks about good. You can see that the bottom of this glass lines up with the top of that. That's about where we want to be. And then take our last one here and just slip that on. Tighten this nice and tight. And then put this aside, ready to be used in a moment. Okay, so for the first part, we will need a little wake up. And I got here some whole clove. You're kind of better off taking a little bit too much, zero that out. That way, when you lose some on the way, uh, you'll have enough for later. 
So I got a little too much, that's fine. I'm gonna measure that out again later. So we're gonna need a mortar and pestle. Add in stuff. Notice I am grinding it. I'm not banging it. You don't want to bang it, just send that you want just to grind it in. Okay, and let's see here. We have a relatively good small grind. That'll be good enough. And now we're back to here. And now we want to actually be a little more precise with how much we take. Also, this stuff smells amazing. That's good enough. So you can see here, we're actually gonna have three different clamps. Uh, one of them for the sand bass cylinder, you can't quite see that one. Uh, one of them for the actual round bottom, and then one to hold the collection uh, flask. So we will start assembly here. Do that. Stir bar. Nice finely ground stuff. and just about 50 mils worth of water. We will rinse whatever is left in there first. Might as well get it all. Now we can take our nice pre-made setup here. Just slip that on, make sure everything's nice and tight. And take our collection flask and place that right there. Now, what I highly recommend is that you actually do this. So when you're setting this up, you want to do this at an angle that will actually uh, force it to drip down and prevent it from collecting right there. So I'm actually going to create that angle, make sure everything's nice and tight. And now I can lower it into position and just kind of try and get that into the sand bath move the sand a bit from below it that'll make it a little easier okay that's that into place and Put this in the correct position. Now we're gonna need some latex tubing. And as always, in through the bottom. And out through the top. That feels a little loose, so we're gonna get a lot of extra material there. And over. Just want to make sure that we have a nice steady flow. That looks about right. We're also going to need either a rubber thermometer adapter or a split cork. And we're going to have our thermometer on that. That's for our sand bath. 
clamp that too high, lower it into position, adjusting angles as needed. We want that just below the level of the sand, as close to our round bottom as possible, and get that stirring a little bit off center. So we're recenter that and turn the heat on. So we're going to want our sand bath to be somewhere between 130 and 160 degrees C because the temperature of the sand bath is always hotter than the inside of the flask and we want to speed this up at least a little bit. Now just be aware that this shot is sped up about 800 times so yours is going to go a little bit slower. Now if you look closely you can see as the vapor climbs up the sides of the three neck flask as it heats up our apparatus and then slowly starts to distill over. There we go, we just got our first drop. Now our two solutions, the water and the eugenol, are not miscible in each other, they won't dissolve. So because of that, if you look closely, you can see that they are in fact cloudy. Okay, let me zoom in on that. Now after some time, you're gonna distill enough of this over that the bubbles are gonna start to stack up. You just want to make sure you stop this before those brown bubbles make it over because they have a lot of other things in it which we don't want. Now if this is going too slow for you, you can take a few layers of aluminum foil and then wrap it around the three neck so to conserve some of that heat in the system. You can also wrap the round bottom, but because I want to, you to see what's actually going on there, I'm going to leave it uncovered. Now notice how at this point a bunch of the grounds are sticking to the sides, the bubbles are coming up real strong. This is the point that you're probably near the end where you won't be able to get much more out before you get some of the brown stuff. Once we've recovered about 35 mils of distillate, we can go ahead and pull this off the heat. Make sure you lift up the receiving flask as well to catch any last minute drops that come out of the condenser. We will let this whole thing sit until it's cool enough for us to handle. Next up we're going to do a quick extraction. So for that we will need a separatory funnel. Make sure that is closed and a ring stand to hold it. Got ourselves a cap here, something to collect in, and our solution. This chills relatively quickly, so you should be able to work with it pretty much immediately. You can see that we're already getting the eugenol separating out by itself. Next, we are going to need some dichloromethane. We're going to do five mils at a time. And we're going to start off by giving a quick rinse to our original flask here. Make sure that we got everything that was in there. Add that in. Cap that off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your separate open. 
work, kick ass, shake, kick ass, shake, kick ass. Let's separate, make sure, take that off. Our compound is more soluble in dichloromethane, so we'll go into that. And dichloromethane is denser than water, so it will sink to the bottom. Now we can collect our first dose of the organic. Now we want to get only the organic, none of the aqueous, if we can avoid it. Then more DCM, five mils again. and repeat the whole thing. One last time, get anything that's left. Now we have a drying agent. Take our flask here. Take our Elemire here, a glass funnel, some cotton. We don't need much, just enough to plug that little hole. So that should be plenty. Just gonna roll that into a ball, squish that in there. And our nice dried solution here. And we're going to filter it through the piece of cotton. Now there's always some left over, so we want to grab whatever solvent we were using. We only need a couple of mils. And we're going to add that back in just to rinse that drying agent and get what's left on it. There you go, crisp, clear, nice, dry solution. You're going to take this and you can either boil it down with a boiling chip or stick that open in your drawer to evaporate to next time. And by next time, it should look something like this. So a week later, or after you boil it down, it looks like this kind of thin oil, uh, maybe a little thicker, maybe yellow, maybe clear. But then after you've got that, take that, we're going to weigh it and now take it to do a GC. So, last thing we need to do before the GC is take our compound and a little flask, and we're gonna make a GC sample. To make the GC sample, it's literally just one drop of your compound. Okay. 
Uh, that's it. I know, that's it. And one milliliter of diethyl ether. to dissolve and take that to the GC. Okay, so what we're going to need is a paper towel, some clean diethyl ether, our sample, and a five or 10 microliter syringe. Uh, we wanna add one microliter and so we want this relatively small. Now to do this, we wanna start off by washing our syringe, uh, especially if somebody used it before you to do that. It's just going to suck up a few times some ether here straight from here and just shoot that out. Now we're using ether because that was our uh, solvent for our compound here. So same solvent and now we're done with this and we can take our syringe again. And so if we look here at our syringe, we want to start off by bringing it to one. So that's for air and now we can take our sample and we're going to come here and I'm going to very carefully bring this up to two and now I'm going to come here see we're at two and I'm going to pull that back to three we now have now this is a five microliter so it's here you might not see it for a 10 microliter, you will see it, but we have that prepared. So now when that is ready, we're gonna come here, press prep run, and wait for it to tell us once again that it's ready. So for this, you wanna take your syringe, grab that needle and guide it in, and then slowly push it in then depress the plunger all at once out back to here and start once we have our chromatogram we can print and that's it you're done